Hey everybody, Jimmy again with the Triple C Collective here on comment Commentary Track Comparisons. With me today, Ed Norton, and we're ready to dive in into episode three of Why the Last Man. Now, <clears throat> what do you, before we dive in actually, as we do, what was the thing that you liked most about episode two? Um, I think it was the final scene, right? It like, was the very, fa uh, very last line. Um, what was it, uh... You two come with me. Yeah. 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 Three fifty-five. Yeah, three fifty-five. Like, that I think that was because like you already knew like you knew where this was going. Yeah. I know it was debriefing, but like you knew where this was going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was probably my favorite part. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, episode two was just good in my book. I don't know if I had necessarily a favorite thing like that. I did like that reuniting though. The reuniting upon further review after we did episode two. And you were talking about that whole end scene. I gotta agree. It's it's pretty impactful and pretty powerful. Um, but for episode three now, I also made a comment in episode two about the weird breathing. And yeah. for me, episode three starts with it again. And I find it very distracting. But I I think it's leading to something. And I'll touch back on to that because it's literally the last point I have uh, once we get to the uh, end, of, end of this. Okay. Um, but so episode three, aside from that weird, uh, what I find distracting breathing, um, it starts with Nora and Mackenzie, her daughter, Mac. Um, they're sharing a house with a bunch of people like they're walking in the street originally. Then they come back home and they have the little powwow and they have the tough conversation about how they need to let um, Nora and Mac, for lack of a better word, saying whatever, let them go. They, we we got to split, got to split ways. Mm -hmm. And that is a devastating conversation because you can see it all in Nora's face. Like, she is, like, blow after blow. Like, she is coming back with her tail between her legs after being turned away from the fence at mm -hmm. the end of episode two or the last time we see them. Um, and then now it's another blow of like, you're, you're too, too many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's definitely going to, I think that's definitely going to play a role for Nora um, in the, in the future. I mean, probably fairly recently, uh, not recently, um, soon is mm -hmm. what I mean in the next uh, upcoming episodes of uh, constantly being, not just turned away, but abandoned. Because, like, in the last episode, what they say to her at the gate, if they needed you, they would have came back for you weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And now her friends basically just say, we're going to this place to be taken care of, but they can't take everybody, mm -hmm. and you're the ones that got to go. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, we're already so close yeah, and tight so, and stuff. So I definitely think <clears throat> this final, this is the final blow for Nora, and she's, you know... She's just, she's completely, without, without her daughter, she's alone, completely mm -hmm. forgotten, abandoned by everybody. So I think that's going to play to some, and like I've, like I'm predicting, like I think she may become the leader of the Amazons, like get them started or something like that. And I think that's all, like all the abandonment, all the issues is the what's going to pieces are yeah. coming into place yeah. for, for that. And, and, and I'm here for it. We've talked about it before. Uh, Nora is a new character, completely made up for the show, not originally from the comic in either book one. I mean, we've got book one and two with us today. Um, and uh, so she's not here, and I find her to be almost, what Nora in particular, to be one of the most compelling characters that we have here. And I really love seeing more because I because I feel her, and I feel like maybe that's who her character is at least starting out to be. She's supposed to be that real audience connection of like, I don't know. We just feel for her. I yeah. feel I feel for her more than I feel for most, um, in a positive light. In the fact that like I want her to succeed. I want her and Mackenzie to you know finally find some like safety or like whatever pseudo safety you can have in this new world and stuff. Like I'm rooting for them. Um, but then we, you know, we move on and we transition into our next place. And the next place we're at is we're at the government building and we're outside again. And we get another shot of the people banging on the barrier and like rah, 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 holding their signs and stuff. 
And um, we get 355 with your pilots. Mm-hmm. Finally, we get that. We we it's just a quick shot, and it's just like the idea. I think of seeing the crowd again, and seeing the crowd grow. It from the last time that we saw them, like with um, Nora and Mackenzie, there was like clearly a line of people being able to get up. Now it seemed a little bit more mob rule, a little less controlled, and a little less organized out there, and more like screaming, rioting in in that kind of realm of like what we're gonna get. Which you know, to be fair, um, in a pseudo way happens in the comic. They just have it with the Republican women, like the wives and stuff yeah. of like all the people in the comic. Um, but three fifty five in the pilots. You, we were talking about this a little bit before, and like, I mean, obviously the end of episode two leading into episode three is your favorite part. So you know, dive in, yeah. chew it a little bit. When it came to that, um, I, I I liked the whole conversations that was going on with them three fifty five, just kind of leaning back and you know, munching on some very generic barbecue chips. Yeah. Um, I I liked that interaction because. The entire time, the pilots are very, you know, on edge. They, what they just saw, they thought was was impossible. So they're on edge. You know, they're very demanding. They're very serious about everything. But 355 kind of just shows that kind of like almost that, that secret agent vibe of confidence of like, I don't understand what your big problem is. I don't understand what your big problem is. She turns on her James Bond. Yeah, she does. She turns, she turns on, her James on the James Bond like, swag of like, we're gonna we're, we're gonna guys, bow out. Everything's cool here. Like I don't understand why you're asking. Like why are you drilling me right now? You're, she reminded me a little bit of Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah. Like like, like like that suaveness and that coolness that Brad Pitt has in that type of character. We've seen him do that. It's really him in like any of the Oceans movies. Yeah. Kind of. Like, but also the the funny thing is that you bring up the Oceans was also the food. Mm-hmm. He's like eating a. <laughs> Every, like, cut scene, he's eating a plate of food. Like, there's a one where he's just eating shrimp when they're talking about, oh, like, like making one of the plans where he's just, like, eating shrimp. I'm like, so, like, yeah, like, that's kind of a resemblance of how 355 was in this one because she's kind of just sitting there chilling, just eating her bag of chips, like. And it's like, well, the president needs us here. And, like, yeah. she even gives, like, <laughs> like that, um. I don't want to say like that accent, but she gives that like tone in her voice. No, like she's like she's just munching, just like 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 those chocolate covered pretzels. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're just hitting different. Those chips were hitting different, where nothing could really bother her. So, um, with with that conversation though, um, I thought it was very key. Uh, point in it was the very end actually, because yeah. uh, I I had that notated, and that one really sticks out to me was. Um, when the pilots, you know, in their franticness are like, and then like they ask her that question of, you really think the president can keep the secret? And she just nonchalantly, just like stone faced, just says, yeah, I do. And it's just, that's a very key three words for 355 because that's only saying, she'll keep him quiet. She'll keep everything. Exactly. She'll that's keep, that's she'll it. She'll keep the lid on it. Yeah, I do is saying, I'm going to make sure. Everything is taken care of. Like, yeah. this is how, like... This is what I do. This is the key to um, her mission, is, and is to protect, uh, you know, the president and to, you know, meet the needs of the president. Anything they ask for. Yeah. So, no red tape? Yeah, she... When she delivered that line, I was like, see, now I'm, I'm positive you're going to die. Yeah. Now, <laughs> it, like, agreed. After this scene here, with 355 and the pilots, and then... And then, like the pilots being all agitated, and the and the the one um, talking about the conspiracy theories and all of that, like I and, like at the end of it, I was like, oh, "You're dying." Like yeah, like you're not making it. And it, it sucks. Kinda, and, and, and it sucks because like because they, like they it's circumstance. They are yeah. truly matter of circumstance. And um, I don't know. I don't think, but we'll get we'll get to that. Um, now we get, now we're still in the government building. We're still in the Pentagon. Um, now we get York waking up to his mother, um, like three inches away from each other's face. Um, what is, how how do you feel about the reunion that we see like from this point forward? Because like before we even get like a true reunion with them, we get like a little cat and mouse chase game between York and Ampersand. Because Amp gets out. Yeah. Um, 
And then there's then there's the Marla effect. Yeah. Or should we call it the Marla variable? I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> call it the Marla mar- variable. Yeah. That, like I <laughs> just um. I like snap into like reality when it comes to these things. Like reality mode for TV shows. Mm-hmm. When Amp escaped, like, first of all, why the heck are you letting him out of the cage at all? You, you know, like, first of all, so he's in a new place. He's going to, like, he's, his curiosity is going to take him where he's going to want to, like... Explore. Escape, yeah. Like, what happens, so... I mean, your owner is an escape artist, so all you know how to do is, like, escape and stuff. True, and, like, <laughs> here's my problem, though, is when he wakes up, and he finds out Amp is gone. I mean, like, in my personal opinion, I'm probably going to wake my mom and be like, Ma, Ma, the monkey. The monkey's gone. <laughs> so, like, that, that I was I was very frustrated with this scene because I was like, just wake up your mom. Wake yeah. up your mom. Yeah, because, like, if you wake up your mom, you send your mom out there to go get the monkey or to send somebody to go get the monkey and it's just like why is there a monkey here well i guess a monkey got in that's kind of weird like and I, you can play that off to some degree of i get uh, so this is a good comparison though to the comic book to the uh, uh to the tv show too uh, that, that sounded stupid but <laughs> <laughs> The comparison to TV show and comic book Yorick is that that this scene kind of personifies him because he never thought before he acted. Um, he was con- consistently reckless. So yeah. this actually this like little scene just kind of like amplifies that. Like okay, no, see, there's a good comparison right there. Like this is the same Yorick in the TV show that I I originally read in the comic book. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that they um, they've done a really good job of uh, being uh, faithful to York and like who he is and um, whatnot. I haven't found any like major uh, derailments or changes um, from anyone uh, from York from comic to here. Um, but then we get the weird breathing again when President Brown wakes up and sees that York's gone as Marla now. Is after York and they're in the um, other office, lower office, with all the still remaining dead men down there. Mm-hmm. And Marla is in shock seeing York, and it's like I have the when I saw that, I had the moment of like Edward Norton in Fight Club, where he's like, "We have lost cabin pressure," and he starts to put together that Brad Pitt is actually him, and they're the same person, and he's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, like I had like the way that they play it, and that they show like how they show Marla and York, and like the reveal that like she sees him and he sees her and stuff. Like, ah, it's beautiful. It was really great stuff. And then of course they always do the uh, classic. Like, um, oh, you were just seeing things. Like like with Jennifer, like President Brown, when they come, or when 355 and President Brown come down, down there, see Marla, York magically I got away. I see them some nights, too. Yeah, no, no, them. no, you just said magically got away. No, that's an escape. Yeah, but, escape artist. You're right. That, he he escaped a, that situation. He is a self-proclaimed escape artist. And you are correct. That's what he does. He, he escaped that situation. That's a great point. Awesome. Um, so then um, then we get, like, the, the mention of uh, Cleveland again. And I wonder if, like, um, I'll just hold up this. In book two, we, we go to Ohio. And I wonder if we'll, if we'll end up seeing a little bit of that. Or like kind of a re- reworking later on into this ep- er, into this season because again this is episode three we we have seven more episodes mm. after this um, which is great I'm super excited about it um, the next thing though is then we 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 also get York we we spend a lot of time with York kind of bouncing between his mother 355 and like 355 b- bouncing around doing different things in this point here um, and. We get a little bit of the York 355 bonding, talking about the Russia situation, about how Russia lied about men still being alive. They stormed the Capitol, and they just wrecked everything in there. Yeah. And it's a complete mess, chaos, raining everywhere. 
Um, in Russia, at least. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, well, we don't. We didn't see any of that. <laughs> it's <True>. in Russia. <laughs> um, but then we get um, we get my favorite thing after this is that we go we go back to Israel, and the reason why I'm so big on Israel is because we get the character of Alter from there. But then we are we're opening up the world. We are opening up the world to see how this affects not just us here in the states but how a worldwide plague event affects the world how people have to come together to just make things livable not even like great living just livable again and like that is one of the things throughout the whole comic of like seeing People trying to rebuild their own little societies, whether it's in Ohio, whether it's retrying to build major cities in, like, D.C. and stuff. (coughs) (coughs) All right, I'm good. I'm done choking. Um, But, like, we get Israel, we get Alma, and then we get the probably the biggest wrench of the show so far. Regina Oliver Mm -hmm. is alive. And we find out in this episode, Regina Oliver is basically the female Trump. And, like, she has a Twitter account. She's really – she makes really um, crazy claims about different things. And uh, she's just kind of a wild card. Kind of just just a wild card. And um, I'm super excited to see now, like – this political struggle that they've kind of been building up we thought was going to happen with Kim, but now we get the twist of Regina Oliver's alive. And so now I'm wondering what's going to happen with Kim here with Jennifer in the States. What's going to happen to Regina? What, how they're going to do all of this. And yeah, what it would from all of this stuff between York seeing Marla and York, and then the uh, the where we actually see Israel, we see Tel Aviv, we see Regina Oliver alive. What of this stuff? Um, like, was any of this like super shocking that you saw? There. Or... Well, uh, I did like the fact that they did a twist um, that you know Regina Oliver, like you said, is like a Trump esque like you know <laughs> what what did York say? She, she was just a bigot. Of some sort. <laughs> yeah. A racist bigot with a Twitter account. Yeah. It's like the funniest Yeah, line a racist ever. bigot with a Twitter account. <laughs> so, um, I did like how they kind of switched that around because in the comic books, um, it was the... Former president, the, uh, the first lady that's like the... Um... No, no, no. Uh, it was the... Agri- no, they make the, the secretary of agriculture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. technically becomes the president. Um, and she's kind of in the middle. Like, I think she was more of an independent because they yeah. didn't really give her a designated side. Um, but, of course, she shows up right when there's uh, riding Republicans' wives out on the <laughs> out on the field. And, you know, Jennifer Brown goes out to stop that. And she's technically in, in the comic book, she's more of a conservative Democrat. Mm. Yeah. Like... She kind of sees different types of viewpoints, but at the same time, she's like, nah, like, I'm, like, pretty cool with guns and stuff like yeah. that, you know? So it's like, Whatever. you know, um, so I did like that little twist. Yeah. Um, especially when, I mean, when you saw that it was Israel and you saw this white woman, basically, mm-hmm. laying down in the bed, like, I wasn't that shocked. I was like, oh, this is going to be, so Regina's plane went down. That's her. Mm-hmm. That's her. Um... I mean, yeah, the every time that Israel's mentioned, basically, yeah, you think about Alter and Sadie, but I don't think we're going to get them for right now. No, 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 no. I, the, the fact that we got Tel Aviv here is probably that maybe the only way we'll get hinted at is if we see Regina Oliver leave Israel mm-hmm. in the show this season. Yeah. If we see her live... Or uh, leave, sorry. Obviously, well, we don't know, obviously. As of right now, they're having her live. I think they could... Maybe she's just a red herring, though. No, I don't think... Maybe Kim's a red herring. I don't know. I'm just excited. Um, But either way, we've got to see... If we see Regina leave Israel, the two guards that... Or whatever that will be on there accompanying her 
on the Israeli side will be Alter and Sadie. There's no question. Mm. If we see that. Otherwise, we might just meet them here and they just might be there. Again, we may not see that until season two. I don't Yeah. I don't know. I really think that they would hold off. Um would probably be surprised if that was like a, an intro. Basically yeah. that like that's how they end the season. It was like a quick glimpse teaser. May, may, maybe a mid credit kind yeah. of thing or something, or I don't know. May, but that's that's coming down the line. That's not what we're worried about right now. Um so, what else do you have? Um, what, what even with the York and three fifty five? Because I think we've kind of like touched on everything else with Marla and all of that. Um, the York and three fifty five and the names, the calling of the names. Yeah. Of like what his name means. Yeah. And everything. Like uh, you know, they named you after a dead clown. <laughs> <laughs> it's possibly the funniest line of this entire episode. Yeah. The best line in this entire episode is they named you after a dead clown. I, I started laughing. I was like, ha! Like, I like thought that was extremely hilarious. But what's good, what's good about that, just that, that's kind of, that's the first conversation they really have. Right. And it's the first conversation <laughs> oh, we definitely over, see. Yeah. yeah. And what I loved about it was because they would jump right into it. Like, that was the banter that, that 355 and York had right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Like, right off the bat, they had that type of banner, um, going back and forth with one another, name calling, bust each other's chops. Um, it was a really, really good interaction to see. And you bonding know? moments yeah. between them. Like, that's, that, and that's, <clears throat> I mean, episode three, we're, they're still kind of building the world. They're still, like, you know, tying things together for eventually to, for it to all unravel, you know, at some point. And, um... I, I've been waiting for moments like this or like long stretches of these kind of scenes between York and 355 because like we have to believe their friendship mm-hmm. and their and their bond that they build uh, obviously over time but like we have to start seeing these seeds right away or maybe uh, like we have to start seeing the seeds and then see it grown over yeah. you know the, res- the course of the whole series and whatnot and um it was very refreshing to see that. I I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed um, seeing that. The dead clown thing is like, that's best line so far in the series. Um, <laughs> like, <a> dead clown. <laughs> um, <clears throat> then we 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 move back into the political arena here. Let, let's talk about Kim again. Um, she annoys me. Yeah, she, she is. She's supposed to. She is yeah. definitely supposed to, but at the same time, it's like, all right, dude, like, like I really, like, I really would like it if you would just not be here right now. Like, that's the type of annoying she has. And to me. and at this point, I kind of wish she was doing a little bit more. In the fact that, like, she just seems to be like a pawn, kind of moving around the board, a pawn who wants to be a queen. You know, yeah. in the game of chess, she just like lingers, man. Just lingers. <laughs> um, but you're right. You're right. She does. And like, even when they uh, like later on in the episode, or like even we can skip to it right now. Like when Kim and three fifty five have the interaction, like she's literally like sneaking around, like hey, let me just slither on in here, yeah, or whatever. Like she, um, I don't know. She reminds me of like Umbridge from Harry Potter. It's a very good comparison. and uh, like. Ah, just a cheese eating person. But the difference is, is that I will say I love to hate Kim, whereas like Umbridge just annoyed me to the point of like, I just want to throw things at the TV. I don't want to throw things yet. I want to see what happens to her. I want to know if she will get hers in the end. So I'm like kind of captivated by Kim at the same time. And it, um, yeah, I, I have such mixed feelings about her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's you're supposed to dislike her. You really are because yeah. she's clearly she's opposed no to. Least... She's well, she's clearly opposed to to uh, President Brown, which you're you know we were already on President Brown's side. Um, the whole my father wanted us to be I- involved, and it's like it doesn't matter. If, unfortunately, your father's dead. There's a new president. She's doing what she can to make sure everybody's taken care of. Um, but then, you know, then there's Kim that's like, you know, appease my needs and stuff like that. And it's just, it, she just gets under your skin very easily. But 
Again, like I've stated so many times, she's supposed to. She's doing a good job at it, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, then we get our next um, kind of comparison. Again, we're with 355. We've already talked about her clear will and, like, kind of intent of, like, we've got this feeling here as the audience that, like, she is going to kill these people oh, yeah. or is going to try and take them out, set them up for sabotage, um, but not in, like, the fun Beastie Boys kind of way of song. Um, but we, the next comparison is really the, the extract plan of wanting to move York. Yeah. That is directly out of like the comic. Like, are you crazy? Do you see people? Because like, even in the comic, the crowds aren't as big out there, but there's crowds of people starting to come in. They're like, no, 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 no. We have to protect him. Yeah. We can't keep him in one spot. In order to protect him is to move him and guess. And then, then we jump into the list of Dr. Man and it's like, Great, now we have a reason to move him. We have a reason to leave, and it's uh, killing two birds with one stone. We go find this doctor from the dive from the list from the lit from the one person on the good list as opposed to the long list of bad options, as 355 says. Yeah. And I just gotta call out again, Ashley Romans, you're killing it. You're killing it as 355. Like she's great. And as much as we've talked about like Nora and like Diane Lane and um, Amber, I think her name is Amber Lynn. I can't think of her last name who plays Kim. As much as we talk about them, Ashley Romans is three fifty as three fifty five is like ignat ignatic. No, um, I can't think of the word. I'm just gonna stop right now. But she's amazing. And it's yeah. great casting. And um, I love everything, every little bit about it. But then we got that other comparison about the extract plan. And I, <laughs> um, the extract plan that they end up executing is like a pretty good, like, I find that to be just like a funny sight gag of how they like do it and stuff. Um, but we'll get there. Uh, we already talked about Israel and Tel Aviv and Regina Oliver being alive. Um, then, then I've got that weird breathing. I think this is like now like the second or third time. No, I heard it first in episode two. I've heard it now twice in episode three. It is just annoying me in the back of my head. And I don't know, maybe maybe I'm crazy and I'm just hearing this. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's there. And I don't know if it annoys anybody else. Maybe I'm just like making a mound out of a molehill or something. <laughs> um but then we're, we're back with Nora and Mac. We got that weird breathing. And I don't know if this weird breathing is also connected in... It, it could be very um, intentional in the fact that it could... I think it is meant to deal with stress for two characters. So you're only hearing it during Nora and President Brown. Pre- President Brown. And it's typically during high instances of stress or worry almost like it's trying to signify a panic attack for the character which i could understand without for Nora. without them actually physically doing the hyperventilating yeah. in the brown paper bag and all of that so i also i just thought of something right now um I possibly if you're if you I, I still haven't noticed it um so if the breathing's happening if you're noticing it during just Jennifer Brown Nora only those two characters could possibly mean that they're going to be connected in some way in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a reuniting of some sort. Uh, who knows? Uh, so maybe I that that's just something I thought of. Could mm-hmm. be a, something in the future, uh, which I find very interesting mm-hmm. um, because of the fact that, as we stated, she in the last episode she got turned away from the gates, so she might feel abandoned. So if uh, if it could be, like I say, the breathing could be linked to those two uh, coming to a head, you know? Yeah, coming ahead, meeting each other, and yep. all that stuff. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, we just don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then, so inside the house, like, one of the th- one of the little things, just because I'm a huge Turtle fan, on Tuesday I have released Turtle Shorts as well here on our channel. Um, we see a little Raphael toy. <laughs> with that Nora picks up and puts the arm back on and I just I saw it and it just warmed my heart. I was like, Turtles, yeah. I love you. 
Uh, <laughs> other than that, like, then there's, um, the, the, the big thing that we happen when we revisit Mac and Nora now is, uh, Mac gets hurt. Mackenzie gets hurt. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like a huge thing. Um, because Nora doesn't have any medical expertise as we can, we know already. She's only ever been an aide. She, far as we can tell, they haven't been able to really forge much or, no. I mean, forge, what am I talking scavenge. about? Scavenge. Yeah. Scavenge a whole bunch of like resources because they were turned away earlier in the episode and now they're like back on their own. They, um, they have gotten back to their house because that was her son's toy because he was about to have the Ninja Turtle party yeah. because they messed up on the jump house. Ah, it's a turtle party, not Paw Patrol. <laughs> like that, That's just really funny. Um, and then Mackenzie gets hurt wanting to bury... Well, it was fighting the crows. Fighting the crows, she but wanting to bury her yeah. dad and her brother in the backyard. Like, mm-hmm. fighting away the crows, being like, we can't leave them for crow, crow food. Crows to kill. Yeah. I mean, kill. I mean, eat. They're already dead. Um, and yeah, so, so that worries me because, um, like you said, she has no medical expertise. She probably, she doesn't have any, probably any medical supplies. I mean, they have like nothing. So I, I, yeah. I am under the assumption that she's going to die from infection of some sort. Yeah. That's right. what I would, I would think. Um, cause I mean, and, and that, that's kind of scary. I don't want a little kid to die. Yeah. I mean. That's, I mean, that's all that could really happen unless, you know, unless she was accepted into D.C. Unless she, because she has nowhere to go. That's the right. biggest issue. She has nowhere to go. And then um, the final thing of them um, still at the house, we jumped to, to some other stuff, but I want to finish off Nora and Mac right here, um, is then we get the bird of prey. Yeah. As Nora is finishing up the grave. And it's a vulture. I, I, I paused it, I took a picture of it on the screen, and then I Google image searched to figure out what kind of bird it was. That's how I knew it was a vulture. I'll, I'll, just looking at it, I couldn't tell that it was a vulture. I knew it was a bird. I assumed it was a bird of prey because it was a big old never, bird. Have you never been to to the zoo? Dude, You've I never seen a vulture before? I probably have, You watch so many cartoons... Yeah, and those are animated cartoon style yeah, they look, version of birds. And they look like vultures. And there's not even that many vultures. I don't even know what Let's you're talking about. Let's be honest. Majority of us have learned more about like what a vulture is from the cartoons than we watch than actually seeing one. And you watch so much more cartoons than you've actually seen a vulture. You should just know how to make Oh, yeah, it's a vulture. I didn't know. So I, I did the Google image search and I double checked. I, I don't. I, I never put it really, down in the notes. I really never thought I was gonna hear somebody say they had to Google search a picture of a vulture to figure out what kind of bird it was. I didn't know. I, 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 James, I don't even, you surprised me. I, I shouldn't. <laughs> okay. um, but so then we have that scene there. Nora just leaves. As far as I can tell. She throws the shovel back in that, like, shallow grave, and they just leave because she's like, I'm not even dealing with yeah. this. There's a vulture here now? We out. Um, and then they listen to Dolly Parton as uh, they drive away. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they have that little glimmer of hope when they turn on the radio and they start the car and the Dolly Parton's playing. And uh, Mackenzie, the daughter, is like, Mommy, who is this? Yeah. And it's just like... A really, it's a really wholesome, adorable, um, cute moment in a really messed up world, especially with the major question mark of unknown of what will happen with Mackenzie and her leg, because her mom asks, "Did you get your shot? Did I get? Did I get you like a tetanus shot yeah. or anything like that?" Um, this year when you went to camp, yeah, I had to. Of uh, you would have needed one for camp, I. Um, and all of that, and uh, so I love Nora and Mac. I hope they make it. I yeah. hope we see more of them. Well, I, I think with the with the that song cutting out though, can like they they. I mean, of course they did that intentionally to mm-hmm. give you like no, no, not everything's okay. Don't forget that they're still in a lot of trouble. Right. Yeah. Like you might get these glimpses, but remember that like stay vigilant, kind mm-hmm. of. Um. Uh, we've talked about Regina Oliver because then we get a bit, because now after we go to Nora and Mac, we, we go back to Washington, 
we have the official confirmation of Dr. Man. We have the official confirmation that they're going to go start looking for her and that that is the best route to get York out as well. 355 says, I can do this, but I have to. It has to be now, not later. Yeah. Not tomorrow. Now. And um, it's it, it leads to some really great Diane Lane acting, and it leads up to Diane Lane's big conversation that she has at the basically at the end of the episode the Sharon Jacob call because once we get back to the Pentagon in York and 355 get ready to leave we have the Sharon Jacob phone call first and the the Sharon Jacob phone call is again the reason why you hire Diane Lane yeah because she chews up the scenery in all of the best ways and, and is just there. She centers that, but also Sharon Jacob herself. Like, only a phone call, and you hear her voice in it. Like, it is a powerhouse of voice acting, and it is a powerhouse performance of just acting from Diane Lane. And it is... One of the moments of, like, for up until this point, a pretty uneventful kind of episode. Almost on the edge of boring. Yeah, I was... I, I don't want to say boring. Oh, uh, no. I was it was slow. I would yeah. definitely say it was a slow episode. There it was, was a slow burn episode, Yeah, there was some sure. pretty... I mean, there was good parts of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, like we said earlier, like... The, you know, they named you after a dead clown quote is probably the best. The speech uh, at the end, uh, not the speech, I'm sorry, as you said, the conversation between uh, President Brown and, and Sharon Jacobs uh, is probably one of the better scenes. Um, that, that whole conversation was really good. Uh, Sharon literally sounds like she's just in pain throughout that entire thing. She's still very much grieving the loss of... Uh, I believe she. They said she had two sons. I believe mm-hmm. she had two sons, so she's yeah. still grieving that. Two years apart. Yeah, and they were still just grieving. like Hero in York. That's yeah. what Jennifer said. That's right, and 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 then yeah, it goes into that into President Brown's uh, speech of get, to Sharon to get her to come on, yeah. and how she connected with her so emotionally, but also kind of uh, you know physically because of the fact that you know they they're in the same situation, and in order to persevere. They still need to be in the same situation. Like, you know, we got to do everything together now. And I think Diane Lane, President Brown, I should say, is delivering, uh, delivering that to Sharon Jacobs worked out perfectly. It was a very good, heartfelt speech. And, I mean, yep. Mm-hmm. She, agreed to, she agreed to help out. <laughs> right. And they needed her. Yeah. And like, because to get the uh, nuclear substations going yeah. to make sure she was sure the only power, person that could do it. In the, nor- in the northeast sector or whatever. Mm-hmm. They said grid, maybe. Northeast sector of the grid. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, so actually, we also got to talk about the um, comparison of book one of the two political parties here. We, we actually get it. In the comic book in book one, why the Last Man by Pia Guerrera and Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, we get the showdown of the former uh, first lady, president or former first lady in her group in the comic against Jennifer Brown in her group in the comic. And here we get a mini version of that of Kim accusing Jennifer Brown and her people of withholding the information of Regina Oliver from them. Yeah. And again, the only reason that um, Kim really gets that information is because one of the former uh, Secret Service people used to work for her dad and she has a connection playing yeah. cards with them that we find out in that 355 conversation yeah. with Kim looking at the, uh, the list of the doctors. Um, the, last, the last real thing then we have is the escape from the Pentagon. And I love the intro, and not not the intro introduction. The uh, the exchange of looks between three fifty five and York when he's like, "All right, where's my suit?" Yeah, she's like, "Well, yeah. they only 
ha- I, like I, there's like six other checkpoints we have to get through. You think you're going to make it through all of them? And he looks down and there is a cart of dead bodies that they are carting out of the building. It is the quickest and easiest way. Um, 355 says it's like it's the one time that they only check one I they check there's six points to leave but they only check your ID at one of those points yeah. and it's right at the end before you leave so it's their best option and if they can put York in the buried in there with some dead bodies you know like they'll be able to get out um, I had it, it just reminded me of Walking Dead a little bit of when they had to put the guts on themselves to walk through the streets to get from one side of Atlanta to the other side um and I'm, I'm i'm cool for a little clever little escape plans like that yeah um with york being the escape artist you would expect him to have been a little bit more wanting to do that of like doing the sleight of hand of like the hiding and thing because you know um i don't know with the magic and all that kind of stuff you would think card tricks things like that that, that would be up his alley something that he would enjoy mm-hmm. Um, but no, he, he, he was really, really against climbing into a bin of dead bodies yeah. and being rolled out to the street. <laughs> he said, I'm going to burn these clothes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but then they get out, they meet the pilots and they take off and they fly off and 355 says, we, you guys are going to be covering us. We will be on your six, um, because we need you as the distraction to yeah. get him out. Yeah. And when she says that, the way they shoot it, you look at the pilots and they give their, oh, okay, whatever. And kind of nonchalant, like, reaction from them. But then it lingers on 355. She smiles. The smile goes to just a regular look. Yeah. To then a degree of menace. And it's in that degree of menacing look. That I was like, what did she do to these pilots? It, it, it was truly at this moment here that I knew the pilots are not making it out of this episode. No. And lo and behold, that is exactly what we get. The helicopter, there's an explosion on the other helicopter in their, um, at their blades and their propellers. In the rotors. Rotors, there we go, yeah. that's the word. And that, that, that helicopter goes down, explodes, and then um, York's freaking out, and it's like, what do we do? Do we go after him? Do, do, like, do nope, we, go? we keep and, going. And, and 355 very sternly and calmly says, no, we keep going. And again, it was, they cut back to York after she says that. And it's in that moment that I think York has his f- a real real cause for concern on being like alone with 355 yeah i don't know if i i don't know if i am really safe yeah i think and like i'm not convinced that he had that fully but i feel like he did because that look that look at the end is like real concern but he did just see a helicopter explode so it's like I would probably give it be giving a look like that if I oh, just yeah. saw a helicopter yeah. explode in front of me. Um, so yeah. Um, what did you have? Uh, actually, no, I forgot. My final note here is after the uh, helicopter crashes. As that happens, I started hearing the breathing again. But the end of it, it goes from breathing to a chant the episode ends from that heavy breathing going into a chant and i think it's the amazons i think it's a hint at the amazons i don't know why jennifer brown why it happens for jennifer brown but for nora we've been talking about this already that she might become that that, well if she's not the leader she's joining the amazon she's going to be a part of it she'll be a player with them Mm -hmm. for sure and i guess you know like did you have anything else about the episode should we just jump to our final thoughts right now yeah i mean i don't really have too much i mean again i still haven't noticed the heavy breathing i'll probably have to look out for that and uh Go back to look at for watch the, the last like, Yeah, wa- wa- watch the first ten minutes of this episode and the last ten minutes. Yeah, of this I'll, episode. I'll, yeah, I'm gonna have to watch to pick up on that because I still haven't noticed it. But I mean, yeah, as we said earlier, I mean it was just kind of a slower paced 
um, episode. I mean, there like it said, it had its good points, it had its bad points. I mean, it ends with a bang, like a yeah. it, it ends with a literal bang here, and um, yeah, basically from the time of the escape, like basically when they're escaping the Pentagon yeah, and like, go all all the way to the end, that's like, the probably the best part of it. Last like 12, 13 minutes of the episode yeah. is like that is definitely. The I mean, best and also I mean, the, and right before that, you know, you have the you know, the great conversation between Sharon Jacobs and President Brown too so like that whole segment is probably the best part of it third act of this episode is really it's good yeah and and yeah the, the first two you're just kind of like okay like mm-hmm. it kind of slow moving and you kind of want it to pick up a little bit and then at the end you're just like all right there you go so we have ended our oh wow my hair got a little crazy there sorry um we have ended every show asking like aside from like final thoughts which we just gave where's Beth Got somebody else. We got we got two others to add to this. Where is Beth? Where is Hero? Where is Sam? Because hmm. we did not see them in this episode. We I mean Beth we still haven't seen now. Wait, Beth wasn't in this episode. <laughs> what? What? Um, but we didn't see Hero and Sam. And yeah. I like don't get me wrong. I find I have found Hero to be a little bit more on the difficult side they they're changing her a little bit and i don't necessarily hate it but i don't find her to be as easy to like as a character maybe but i don't know maybe we'll see more maybe we'll see less i don't know but either way i found her and sam being a glaring omission from this episode yeah um any other final thoughts comments concerns no i actually think we touched on everything this time yeah. Pretty well. Um, like you said, because we said earlier, you know, slow episode, definitely, you know, the third act was great, but I, we think there was so much more to come from the first two episodes, so. Yeah. Right, and like, again, these, I would say, after watching episode three, the first three episodes tend to um, make up, like, this first book, right? Yeah, now. pretty I much. would say... With the glaring omission of how they introduce uh, Dr. Mann, because at this point in the in book one, Dr. Mann is already introduced and it is a character with York in 355. Here in the show, um, we are just getting ready to leave to go meet Dr. Mann and go on that adventure to go find her in yeah. Boston um, and the like. And... I'm excited for now this. Uh, we're three episodes in. We've got seven more to go. I'm excited to see now what they might start pulling from book two. That is the next one. And it is book two here. Cycles, they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, the how the series opened with 355 and the bombing. It happens in here. Yeah. It, it, they talk about it. Um, in book two of it and it it like when i read book two in prep for like this episode and the next one um i was like oh my god i can't i can't believe i found this and i just saw this i can't believe i forgot about this like oh my god they did it that's awesome um but i think we've said our piece today we've we've made our final comments we've made our final comparisons about episode three of why the last man and my name is Jimmy Clark. I'm Matt Norton. Thank you for joining us here on the Triple C Collective for commentary track comparisons. You guys have a great day. <laughs>